Can you beat Arcane Odyssey with just a rowboat? Yo, what's up guys? Today we are going to be finding out if you can indeed beat Arcane Odyssey with just a rowboat. Now, the short answer for this is no. Well, Noah's of the Nimbus Sea update at least. Let me explain. The reason for that is that in the patch notes, you're actually forced to get a sailboat now. Now, initially reading this made me scared when I saw it. Now, the patch notes weren't out yet because they were for the next update, which being at this time, the patch notes were for the Nimbus C Part 1 update, which was soon to release at the time. This was like two days beforehand that I saw it. And knowing my already trash schedule with posting videos, I had to figure something out. So, I did. I decided to just go ahead and grind it out and hear the results. Before I get into the video, this challenge does have some rules, although pretty simple ones. Rule 1, I can only travel in a rowboat. This means I am not allowed to purchase another boat for traveling. Now, the patch notes force you to get a sailboat now, but at the time, they didn't. So, the goal is to just use the rowboat. Rule number 2, I am not allowed to use someone else's boat for traveling. So, that means I can't have like an alt account or a friend lend me their brig as that's against the rules. And rule number three, for the Sky Island section of the story, I am allowed to use the Sky Ship, but only for the section of the story. Meaning, I cannot use the Sky Ship to cheese island traveling, so I can't like, sail above like, Sailor's Lodge, or anything like that. I also cannot use it past the Sailor's Lodge quest. So as soon as I get that quest in the story, I can no longer use the Sky Ship for the remainder of the challenge. The challenge is completed once I am completed with the story, which at the time, the Nimbus Sea wasn't there, so pretty much as soon as I got my awakening and was back on Windrow Island, and when I reach max level, which at the time of this recording is only 125. Now I hope you guys enjoy this video, it was pretty fun to make, and without further ado, let's get right into the challenge. So after initially starting the playthrough you know waking up on dawn island go talk to morden and then I, I hop up in the rowboat and i realize this is what i'm going to be spending the challenge in so i sailed to well not sailed i guess i rode <laughs> to the jaws and you know i just did the story as normal i decided that i would want to try to maximize my XP gain for this playthrough, so I decided to go and 100% the Jaws, meaning I ended up going to go get the secret, which if you didn't know where the secret was, it's right here. So yeah, if you didn't know, now you know. Go ahead, go ahead, get that. But anyways, after that, I went and I fought Shura. Shura is always a pretty easy boss fight, especially when you're just cheesing him with any sort of ranged attack. So, yep, beat him pretty easily. Then I went and I talked to the chief of Red Wake because, you know, he needs to know that I just took care of took care of Shura. And then boom, we're off to uh we're off to Frostville. Here usually I would like, you know, get a sailboat, but nope, not not this run. So yeah, I started rowing to Frostmill. And then I told the Red Wake Scout that he can go back home. You know, I just did the Frostmill quest. Pretty easy. Pretty self-explanatory. Trying to maximize as much XP gain on the island I can as I can without having to travel too much because, again, the rowboat is pretty tedious. Yeah, so uh, I fought Iris. She's also really easy. Both her and Shira are... Like, I don't even need to mention them. I told Mayor Orwin that Iris has been dealt with. And now it is time to bandit beat. Usually I would go here and go explore, do the Enazor quest, you know, collect a bunch of stuff. But nope, not here. The rowboat, it would have just taken too long. And I would have just felt kind of bored. Not to mention just the general... Like, like the time window I had to do this in, I had like two days and this, this was quite a bit of grinding. I, I don't, I don't speed run my Arcane Odyssey playthroughs too well. 
so yeah a bandit beat the little ice smugglers or whatever they're called which i don't even think you can bandit beat anymore due to the changes in quests i don't think you can like repeat quests anymore but anyways boom after like 20 minutes we are level 40 and now it is time to row to the stepstones <laughs> Before I left Frostmill, I had some wooden hull armor crafted for my rowboat to defend it from ocean terrors and other things that lurk in the deep dark of the Bronze Sea. It isn't much defense, but I mean it's something I could put on the rowboat, which you can't put much on it. I then rowed all the way to the Stepstones and talked to Ren. Then I scaled the Stepstones and made it to the top while getting the exploration for it completed on the way. I continue with the story as normal, even getting completion on pretty much every Sky Island I could visit. You know, this is kind of my only opportunity in the challenge to actually be on the Sky Islands and using the Sky Ship, so I might as well make the most out of it and get as much XP as I can. After quite a bit of doing quests, I hit level 50 and made sure to buy some iron armor, as it gives pretty good defense which can greatly help with our upcoming fight with Lord Elias. I continued getting XP by fighting the Snow Mage and making my way over to the Myriad and then once I was done there I just resetted the fast travel because it's just easier than sailing all the way back on the Sky Ship. Here I encountered my first issue with the run. If you guys remember in the rules, I can only use the Sky Ship for the story portion where it is required, as well as I cannot use it to cheese islands. This means I cannot position it above an island and just like Kratos it down. I have to go from the base of the Stepstones and row to said island if I want to go to a, an island, you know, that's in the Bronze Sea and not in the sky. This doesn't really impact the run other than just being a small obstacle, as I rode to Harvest Island regardless to further progress the Sky Pumpkin quest, as well as doing the Iron Leg quest and get some exploration tasks done for some additional XP. With that being said, I accidentally blew myself up and continued the story, which had me heading towards the Jin Ruins to fight Lord Elias. Honestly, I'm pretty proud of myself because beforehand, this boss was a nightmare for me to fight, like on my other slots. Now he really isn't though, and I was able to defeat him and his order members with major ease. Although on this particular fight, I don't know how, I don't know what happened, but he, well, I don't know. What he did was he like fell off or suffocated in the rocks, but at this point he was dead and it counted as me beating him. And yeah, you know, the average person would just take the dub and leave, but I don't consider myself the average person. Uh, so I talked to him, spared him, and I just fought him again. Oh yeah, and I know I'm a higher level on the second fight. Deal with it, okay? It's one level. I was gonna win regardless. Anyways, my work here wasn't done. Before I talked to Iris and fully halted me for being in the Sky Islands for the remainder of the challenge, I completed my Sky Pumpkin quest and got one chest that was missing at the Myriad, and then I had full uh, map completion of the sky. I then just reset after I was done with that, and then I talked to Iris, I got to the base of the Stepstones, and began to row to Sailor's Lodge. Now rowing from the Stepstones to Sailor's Lodge was kind of long, but when I got there, I began to do some quests, as well as continuing the story by talking to Morden. I then continued with more quests, making my way to Munera Garden, and Silverhold to pull off an epic fast leveling strat. By the way, just a disclaimer, while playing Arcane Odyssey, make sure you take your time. There should be no such thing as fast leveling, cause if you complete, if you become max level too fast, you can actually get banned for auto farming, even if you didn't auto farm. Now don't worry, the leveling strat is nothing like illegal, and it's not only not illegal, but it's also simple to pull off and something that beats going around in the rowboat to different islands and doing exploration tasks because that's already slow enough. Essentially, you're just going to want to go from Silverhold to Palotown exchanging gunpowder barrels. So, say you start at Silverhold, you get gunpowder barrels there. Uh, in my case, I rode a Pal Palotown, sell those gunpowder barrels, grab gunpowder barrels from Palotown, then row back to Silverhold, sell those at Silverhold, and just kind of rinse and repeat. It took me about 25 minutes to get 9 levels, and like on the way, 
I even got myself a deckhand, as well as naming my robo row runner. But anyway, since we're level 75 now, I headed to Fort Talos and went through with the story. Now this part of the story is usually pretty easy for me, but surprisingly General Argos actually ended up killing me. Not only once, but twice. I managed to kill him the third time though, and also during one of the fights, my friend gave me a spare surge scroll for some sky pumpkins, and this is important for later in the story. Anyways, killed General Argos, made my way out of Fort Talos, and I used the surge scroll, and then I took a well needed break. And when I hopped back on, I was at Sailor's Lodge. There, I did the potion brewing quest and the starving woman quest. Got a treasure chart for Munera Garden, and I did the treasure chart for Munera Garden. And then I made my way to the forest of Cernuno to fight Cernix. Cernix is never a particularly hard fight, like most bosses in this game. So I breezed right through him, and with that, I grabbed some chests for exploration, finished the Cernix quest, and rode off to Shell Island. Shell Island is always a fun part of the game in my opinion because it's just so peaceful and the soundtrack to Manoa Village has to be my favorite one used in Arcane Odyssey. It's just so chill. I mean listen. After completing a few quests at Shell Island, I ended up getting some uh, ship lanterns and that rounds off the things that I could put on my rowboat and then I rode to Sandfall just grabbed a few things there and then I reset character and then I realized I never even f talked to the guy to finish the potion brewing quest like I, I brewed the potions but I never talked to him so, so that put me at level 90. Anyways, I ended up rowing to Ravenna early to do the Thermofist quest, which put me at level 91. And upon completion of this, I fished to complete the learning how to fish quest. You know, the one from Red Wake that I never completed up until this point. After learning the fundamentals of fishing, I just cooked. I let me cook. I let myself cook. I really just sat here for like in the in the double digits of minutes cooking food for xp i mean yeah it's xp but really i was stretching this out dog it's all right though because now i'm level 93 and we can continue with the story when i hit level 93 i grabbed lots of quests in ravenna to do along the way with the story i just did the story as normal though i mean it's kind of a regular playthrough if you look at it i hit level 98 by the time it was time to fight lady karina though and I kind of had a close call with her because I became a mindless surge spammer as soon as I got the scroll. But, I mean, hey, we still beat her first time. Then I got kicked while I was down by General Julian and I was put in the pen. Then I skipped a bunch of dialogue. I mean, a bunch of it. There's like a whole lot in here. One thing that was kind of cool, I guess, was to see the absence of Edward Kenton in the dialogue. Usually I have him on my crew by this point, but I didn't even bother interacting with him in this playthrough. Anyways, King Calvis. Now, I would say I had an epic battle that no one had ever seen before, and I matched Calvis' strength like no one ever before. I made him pay for his crimes. His crimes on the Ravenna people. His crimes within the Order of Aesir. Aesir? Aesir? I don't know. The crime of locking me away for so long, and especially the crime of impaling my dear friend Naviro right in front of my very eyes. Oh, I made him pay. But in actuality, I'm an actual dumpster. Like when it play, when it comes to playing the game. So, like, I just think it's fun. So I just messaged some guy in my server and he came to help. Shout out to the guy who helped me though, for real. After showing Calvis who the actual king is with the help of the one guy of course shout out again for real i carried naviro in my arms and made it to the shore of the southern plains whilst conversing with the gang king calvis's scrappy do looking little brother had to pull up on us so i had to show oh him goodness. these bars too here though is another possible issue with this challenge you see for this portion of the story you need to sink a ravenna sailboat and flee to windrow island now I already know that you could just kill the crew on board and it'll count for the quest anyways, but the thing is, do we need to have like the option avail available to sink the boat, aka having the ability to put 
a weapon on our boat like a cannon or a mortar or a ram which you can't do with the rowboat so is this it is the challenge over i don't know i guess we'll have to see It works. We could use the rowboat. Oh my god! No! I was honestly pretty nervous. I thought about how this part in the story would play out beforehand when I like had the video idea in mind, but I'm glad it played out the way it is because we're pretty close to being done with the challenge. Anyways, I rode to Winrow Island, defeated some wolves bandits, and talked to Warren about awakenings. I didn't go to meditate right away though for my awakening. I figured I should level up first, so I went to Ravenna and I did about like one quest and then I figured it was time to go to Sandfall and meditate. Uh, then after that I went to Shell and then I meditated there as well and completed the additional Ancient Hall quest that gives you like a strong scroll. Then I went to Accursius' keep because it was nearby for some exploration tasks because like I still needed levels, but on my way, my rowboat sank due to high waves and I ended up drowning trying to swim to shore. I just rode all the way from Winrow Island to the Jaws to meditate at the final spot, where a mysterious voice told me to head to the top of Mount Othrys. But I was told otherwise by the level lock, which told me to be level 119. I ended up going back to Ravenna and getting some exploration done as well as some quests completed. and. When I was level 114, I ended up just repeating the Board Centurion quest because it's quite an easy way to obtain XP, although, again, I don't think you can repeat quests anymore. After I was finally level 119 and I was ready to row to Mount Authors at last, so I rode and it was really cool. Look at this freaking sped up footage, dude, it was baller. When I got there, I traversed through the Titan Caverns and made it out of there, and then I traversed through the Tundra at the top of Mount Authors, made it to the Temple, and got my Awakening. Once I got my Awakening, I put moves on my second magic and completed Mount Authors' exploration to 100%. After rowing back to Windrow and doing some completion, I finished the main story at the time. Problem is, I was only level 122, and as I said earlier in the video, the max level at the time was 125, so... You know what that means, I have to get three more levels, and to get those three levels, you know, just the final three, I ended up just going and doing the board centurion quest with my friend, because he also needed to level up a slot. And finally, after a long while, the challenge is over, and it was all done in a rowboat. Yeah guys, so that's the video. Here on screen is some additional proof of me doing the challenge entirely in a rowboat. As you can see, I can't switch my ship type because I, I don't own any more ships than the rowboat. And also, when I talk to the shipwright, I haven't bought any other ships. Overall, this challenge was pretty fun. Let me know what you guys think. And all the way back when I started the challenge, I was on call with one of my friends. I called a lot of my friends while I was doing this because who knew that Rowan could be pretty boring by herself. And the topic of me not having a name for my fans was brought up, so my friend said this. RG Scallywag Gang. I think that's a good gang name. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Maybe for like the Arcane Odyssey videos because it has like the pirate theme, but uh, yeah. I, I guess you guys will be known as the RG Scallywags, or not. Let me know uh, if you have any other name suggestions for a fan base. It's a work in progress. Anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this, as I put a lot of effort into this. I worked pretty hard on this video. I try to work hard on all my videos. If you're new and enjoyed, please subscribe. Like, you know, like, if you're chill like that. And, you know, also leave a like if, if, you're, if you're chill like that. And if you're watching right at this point, comment mac and cheese. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Oh, an invisible flesh mark? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah. Although, I, in, even if I have to buy a sailboat, I'll still make sure I, like, switch to the rowboat 100% of the time, even if I have to, uh, for, because the tutorial changes. Yep. Anyway, that's it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, see you later. Thank you.